Assalamu alaikum gamian. Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to perform CMR feature tracking using segment software. Um, we all know that segment has a free commercial version, which is a powerful uh, CMR workstation for volumetric assessment, flow analysis, and for even T1 and T2 mapping. However, uh, this feature tracking feature is uh, not included in the free version, so it has to be purchased separately. I'm using the latest version of segment, segment version 3. So I'm going to double click the segment icon on my desktop and just wait for a while till the program starts. Okay, this is the interface of the software. It's very easy and user friendly. Uh, we are not going to talk about it right now. So I will go directly to open folder to select my CMR Daikon files. Okay, to perform feature tracking, you have to have uh, semi short axis slices covering the whole ventricle in order to perform the circumferential and radial strain and also to have the three long axes, the four chamber, two chamber and three chamber in order to perform the longitudinal strain. So I'm going to select all these files and then load selected files. Okay, these are the selected slices on the left panel. I'm going to start with the short axis. Um, the first step, which is a very important step, is to set the end systolic phase because the software by default puts both the end diastole and end systole in the initial time frame. Okay, to do so, you have to scroll forward with your keyboard till visually get the best end systolic phase, which is right here, and then go to edit and set end systole at current time frame. Okay. Uh, actually, this step is not an essential step in performing the strain analysis. The software will perform, will calculate the strain analysis in either way. But it's a very important step to select the slices we are going to work on, especially the basal slices. Okay, in order to understand this, I will just ignore this step and move directly to the next step, which is strain, and then start feature tracking short axis. Okay. It will open this uh, window, which contains the short axis slices from base to apex at the initial time frame and supposedly the end systolic frame. Okay, but they are the same because we didn't set the end systolic time as a correct end systolic time frame. Okay, so what's the problem with that? The problem is that if I select, for example, this nice slice as a basal slice, it's perfect, right? But this is during uh, diastole or the initial time frame. Actually, I don't know how it will look during systole, okay? Don't forget that um, there is a cardiac motion and there is a longitudinal shortening during systole. So the heart actually is pulled downward during systole. So this slice may cut um, 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 uh, through the LVOT or aortic annulus and lose some parts of myocardium. And this will get very wrong results, okay? So I will just cancel this step and go back to the previous step to set the correct end systolic phase. Okay, as we said before from edit and set in history at current time frame. Perfect. Now it's set to the correct time frame. Okay, don't forget to scroll back to the initial time frame because the software must start the feature tracking from the initial time frame. Okay, now I'm ready to move to the next step, which is strain. Okay, in older versions, you will find it under the uh, on the top here on, under the MR tab, but in the new version, it's located right here. Okay, strain and then start feature tracking short axis. Okay, it will open the same uh, window, but now with the correct end systolic phase. Okay, of course, you have already noticed that this nice slice we have selected before is not that nice during history, right? It lost some parts of myocardium. So this will get us very wrong results if we selected the, uh, this slice. Okay, so for me, I will go further down, downward to select this slice instead. Okay, we select the basal slice with uh, the left mouse click. Okay, and then the next step is to select the apical slice. 
okay? And the trick behind selecting the apical slice is uh, not to go too downward because we uh, we don't select the uh, true apex or the apical cap. We should select the apical segments, the four apical segments, which is the apical anterior, apical septal, apical inferior, and apical lateral, okay? So for me, I just go one or two slices below the mid uh, ventricular segment, okay? So for me, I will select this slice, okay? We select the apical slice with the right mouse click, okay? So we select the basal slice with the left mouse click and the apical slice with the right mouse click, and the software automatically puts the mid ventricle somewhere in between. Okay, so I will press OK to move to the next step. Okay, so this is the uh, crop box I need to adjust. Uh, the trick behind adjusting this uh, uh, crop box is not to make it too small or too big, because making it too small like this, it will lower the image resolution, so the image will pixelate. Okay, while making it too big like this, it will improve the image resolution, but it will cost you a lot of time because the software, uh, the software will register each pixel inside this uh, crop box, which means that it will track the motion of each pixel inside this box during the cardiac cycle. So it will take a lot of time. Okay, so instead I will adjust my crop box somewhere in between like this and then press OK. Okay, this is a, the drawing guide I'm going to ignore. These are the three selected slices. Okay, the basal slice, the mid slice, and the apical slice we have already selected. Now we are ready to uh, start drawing the endocontours and AB contours. For the LV endocontour, we use this red line. Okay, so I will select this and start drawing the endocontours. Add the basal slice. Okay, and for the mid ventricle, and for the apical segments, okay, then I will draw the AB contour with this green line. So this is the AB contour for the apical segment. Okay, and the mid ventricle. Okay, and for the basal slice. So we have finished drawing the LV endocontours and AB contours. If you want to perform strain for the LV only, now you are ready to move to the next step. But if we want to uh, calculate the uh, circumferential strain of the RV as well, so we have to draw the endocontour of the RV at this step. We draw the endocontour of the RV with this purple line. I will select the purple line and then start drawing the RV endocontour as a basal slice. just like that okay and for the mid ventricle okay and for the apex Okay, perfect. Now we have finished drawing the endocontours and AB contours for the LV and RV in the short axis view. If you want to calculate only the circumferential and radial strains, so you are now ready to move to the next step. But if you want to calculate the longitudinal strain as well, so you have to draw the endo and AB contours uh, in the three long axes. 
Okay, but first we have to finish till the registration is done. It's just done right now. Then I will move to calculate the longitudinal strain from the same tab here, strain, and then start feature tracking long axis analysis. Okay, from this icon, I will select this icon and it will show me the crop box. Okay, with the same, I will adjust it with the same principles as we described in the short axis. This is for the full chamber and for the two chamber and for the three chamber okay this is a drawing guide i'm going to ignore this message and i'm now ready to uh, draw the endo contours and ab contours in the long axis okay it's the same as the short axis however um, the main difference is that we draw the endo contours and AB contours with the same red color. Okay, we don't use the green color for the AB contour like in short axis. We draw both endo contours and AB contours with the red color. I am going to show you how. I will select the red color. Okay, I'm just I will adjust the contrast. Okay, so I'm selecting the red color. I will start with the endo contours. Okay, and after reaching the mitral annulus, I'll go back with the same red color to draw the AB contour. Okay, this way. Okay, the same for the two chamber. We'll start with the endo contour. Okay, then go back with the same color, with the same line to draw the AB contour. Okay. And I can go back to adjust this segment right here. Okay, and for the three chamber. Okay, perfect. Uh, if you want to calculate the longitudinal strain of the RV as well, so you have to draw the endo contour of the RV in the four chamber view. Okay, I will go to select the purple line and start drawing the RV endo contour. Okay, as we did in the short axis. But the added step here, okay, after uh, drawing the endo contour, the only added step is uh, that we have to select uh, the tricuspid valve plane. Okay, so I will go to use this tool, which is the annotation point. I will click on it and then go to the lateral tricuspid annulus. And with the left mouse click, I will put a point here. Then with the right mouse click, I will rename this point to tricuspid valve plane. Okay, the same for the septal annulus. Okay, I will left mouse click on it. To put a point, then with the right mouse click, I will rename this point to tricuspid valve plane. Okay. So now we have drawn the endo contours and L and AB contours for the LV and RV in all uh, uh, the selected views, the short axis and three long axes, and the registration here is done. So we are now ready to move to the next step, which is showing the results. Okay. Uh, so from the same tab. And the same icon we selected in the start. Okay, for the short axis, I will click again on Start Feature Tracking Strain Short Axis. Okay, it will show me the results for the circumferential and radial strain. He is now calculating strain.
Okay. So these are the results. This is the peak circumferential strain for the LV and for the RV and the peak radial strain. Okay, and these are the peak values for the LV. Okay, from this drop down menu, you can select the torsion or, or rotation. Okay, so these are the peak results and also the segmental results from here. This is the pulse I for the circumferential strain in each of the 16 myocardial segments. And this is the peak radial strain, also segmental. Okay, and from this menu, you can select also the strain in the end systolic phases or strain rate. Okay. Um, to save this pulse eye, you just click on save pulse eye and then save it wherever you want. And also we can export all the results. Okay, from here, export max. Okay, the data will be copied to clipboard and then we can go to the patient folder and create a new spreadsheet. Okay, and just put the numbers in it. This way. Okay, so these are all the results for the patients for the circumferential and radial strain. Okay, I will close this window to go back to the main software interface to uh, uh, show the longitudinal strain results from the same tab strain and the same icon we selected before, which is strain feature tracking long axis analysis. I will click on it again. Okay, it will calculate the longitudinal strain. Okay, the same for the short axis. These are the peak uh, strain values, the peak uh, longitudinal strain for the LV and for the RV. And this is the segmental longitudinal strain in each of the 17 myocardial segments at the apex uh, for the longitudinal strain. Okay, and also you can uh, visually assess the whole motion here and strain values here from this uh, icon play. You can play the cine movie with the uh, tracking feature on it. Okay, this is for a chamber and three chamber and also for two chamber. Okay, so after we finish, um, after finishing um, 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 the analysis, okay, you can just save uh, the, the results. Okay, we can go to save to desk. Okay, um, you can save all the contours and all the results you have got in a .mat file with the patient name. Okay, and put it wherever you want. So you can get back to the results anytime you want. Okay. So this was a quick overview on how to perform CMR feature tracking using segment software. As you can see, it's very easy and rapid analysis. Uh, I hope that someone would find it useful. See you again in next videos and goodbye.